Hello and welcome to Newsworthy Stories with Jacqueline Jimenez. I have been telling you about this unprecedented partnership between AMPS Institute and the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service. And guess what? They're getting results. They have been holding youth entrepreneurship retreats all over the U.S. Virgin Islands and in Puerto Rico. And you know what? They're also hearing already from the media. But guess what? What I heard this past time on this latest retreat in Puerto Rico is that students from our past retreats in St. Croix, St. Thomas, and again, this is our second time in Puerto Rico, they are now working with the USDA. Students pouring into the AMPS Entrepreneurship Leadership Institute retreat in Rincon, Puerto Rico. It's the second time AMPS International LLC, in partnership with the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service, have reached out to high school and college age students to generate interest in the field of agriculture and conservation in that region. Because life is about relationships, period. They say, well, you know, you should have a good education. Yes, you should have a good education. But if you don't have a good education and you don't know anybody, what are you going to do with it? It's hard for you to get a job. Wouldn't it be easier to get an opportunity or a job if, if you knew someone at that company? Why would you want to go somewhere and turn in a resume like everybody else? Our islands are not growing. If anything, they'll become smaller with time because of the upcoming challenges of climate change. So that requires everyone in this room to care. So when there's a problem, entrepreneurs come up with solutions. When there's a void, entrepreneurs fill the void through using innovation, creativity, working in teams, being able to network, tapping into Lewis, who's filled with a lot of contacts and access to funding. It's really up to you. The partnership between AMPS Institute and the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service made possible by Chief Terry Cosby and his colleague Vivian Dixon, who helped champion thousands of dollars in funding so students could participate for free. This is a critical venture to generate interest in the field of agriculture and conservation in the U.S. Virgin Islands and Puerto Rico because most of the food and water in the regions are imported. My name is Sofia Muñiz Ferrer. I'm 21 years old and I go to Iowa State University. So I choose to come to AMP because I was past national officer from the FFA and at the state convention they started talking about the institute, about how good it was and my sister also went here and that's why I decided to join. Excellent. My name is Arisa Cervera Vega. I am from Iowa and the school is Dr. Carlos Gonzalez. I'm 16 year old and I came here because um, James comes to the school and the teacher say, um, Sally say you want to go and say yes, I like to experience more. Sure, you're open to learn, absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. My name is Roy Rivera, Iris Harvey. Um, I just graduated from high school and I'm going to college to the University of Puerto Rico at Maya West. And I really like this opportunity that AMS Institute offers. What's the name of the person who referred you? What's her name? Miriam. Miriam. Speak to the camera and tell Miriam, thank you because I learned so much and express to her what you've learned. Miriam, thank you so much for the opportunity that you give me. And I met a lot of people, well, the director of the USDA that was in, that I didn't imagine that I was going to meet, it, to meet him. And that's all. Thank you, Miriam. Thank you so much. Good enough. Good enough. Um, my name is Faith Bishop. I'm from Maryland. I just graduated Frederick Douglass High School and I'm going to the University of Maryland Eastern Shore. Um, I'm here because I want to learn about different agricultural systems like around the world and I also want to pursue a career in farming. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming from so far to here. First time in Puerto Rico? Yeah. What do you think so far? Oh, I love it. And I'm going to come back. By nights in, participants were placed in teams preparing for their pitch. So our solution is to design custom-made garden beds out of recycled materials, judging by what type of plants you want to grow. 
Entonces lo vamos a estar entonces realizando mediante muchísimas redes sociales, abarcando lo que son las redes sociales, la televisión, la radio, periódico y blogs. And we're going to be we're going to be promoting those um, businesses using the social media, blogs, TV, and like everything that has to do with social media. Our slogan is get the help you need in the time you need, and our service is expertise consultant for the farmers and uh, agronomers that need the help or expertise in their um, day-to-day problems. Our main goal is to create some types of machines that are AI-powered because everyone is using AI nowadays, and some sensors that could tell you about the soil, and some drones that could wake up in the morning like at 7 a.m. and water the crops and everything like that. Our company's name is going to be Green Hands, and the slogan is From the Soil to Your Hands. This would be a woman-owned company. After a good night's sleep, it was time to charge up and head out to the farms. A windy trip through the mountains leading us to Cafe Mis Abuelos. You run through it once just picking only the red bean, right? So I've, leaving all those green beans behind and then you circle back by the time because, you know, it takes a while to go to a certain area and pick everything that's there. And then by, by the time you're done with that area, a lot of those green beans that were left behind are going to ripen, right? So you circle back and you do that a second time and then the third time you just pick everything that's left. That's a very ideal scenario. From coffee to cacao, the AMPS Institute participants getting a hands-on experience up close. Oh. That's, the, that's the cocoa bean. He took some that he planted for seedlings and he used those for grafting, you know, so he grafted other varieties. Into and he left other areas that is just a seedling to see how they produce. So, so for those of you that don't know, when you're planting from seed, you're depending on the genetics of that particular seed. So you may not know what you're going to get. You may get this or you may get this or you may get uh, something prone to it. The seed can have different, just like all your brothers can be different, right? I mean, no, so. so you went through the uh, coffee farm, you went through the cocoa farm, and they told you what some of their challenges are. And as one always say, one of the biggest challenges is what? The workforce, right? That's one of the biggest challenges that these farmers have. On the return, teams developing their strategies and hearing from ambassadors on how to prepare for the pitch competition. Now we're going to see some of the things you can get better at to produce. But the night wasn't over. It was time to learn the importance of not only stretching their minds, but their bodies. think about what you went through when you came here, you had to be put into groups. And those groups became business partners and became one business. And so in that business, you all had to go through a lot of stuff and you had to use a lot of skills that you probably didn't even think you needed to use. You had to use your communication skills. You had to use something that you're not taught in school, which is your listening skill. Conflict resolution. Sometimes you all didn't agree with something. So you had to figure out, how do I uh, uh, get my creativity back into this group, even though I don't agree with what's going on? I've got to speak up. So you all went through a lot of stuff, and you didn't know you were going through it. So you have to be proud of the fact that you started something, and now you finished something. Because what we did was we raised the bar for you. And you came to that bar, and you exceeded our expectations. With the introduction of the judges, including two from Alabama, the pitch competition got underway. First up, a team with a business they call Growing Solutions, creating hydroponic systems and customized garden beds. Our three competitors are freight farms, 10 acre farms, and local landscapers. Um, different from us, we specialize in three different aspects, while those only specialize in one. I am a farmer myself, or I've been gardening for about four years. And this is something that is needed. Who is your target market? We want to target uh, everyone who wants to 
Do we have a uh, opportunity to be sustainable on the on what is grown or on what they consume? But not everyone can do it because maybe of space or not everyone has the knowledge or time or they just don't want to uh, get to the backyard and build a garden. So that's why we wanted to bring the the garden uh, itself already built, manufactured, and we want to target. Doesn't matter if they're low income or high income. Everyone, everyone has the opportunity. Giving farmers more exposure is the idea behind the team Echo organization. Echo organization is a communication-based organization that brings value to the farmers and the general environmental community. The people that we will be marketing to will be the farmers. Why? Because there's like many different little businesses, like agricultural businesses that you don't know about and that need more recognition, more promotion. So if I'm not mistaken, I heard you guys say that instead of having to look for an applicant, the applicant would find you. We got this solution that when you go to the website, you see these people that want to get hired, but in the best position that they can get. So you're gonna be able to not only see their resume, but to talk to them what they can get or be benefited in your company. The company Green for Help creating an international interactive consulting website for those in the agricultural and conservation industries. Like AI just answered the questions like right away, but with this app that this we have, um, we can consult with you and we can help you like um, face to face. How we're gonna go and find those clients, those people that are gonna be interested, interested on our company? Well, we have social media. Social media is true or key to find those young generation and inform them of our company. So what our business is going to be is an attribute and an asset for these farmers all across the world. But our vision is to provide a reliable source for these farmers in order to network for their network. I love that you said you guys wanted to connect farmers with farmers because all of the education in the world all of the money in the world without relationships is nothing. So I love that you brought it back to relationships. And I love that you took us through your website um, and you even pointed out, you know, what you learned along the way yesterday, what some of the farmers were saying, and then you brought it back to how you guys could help. So great job. Agli AI offering up a solution for farmers struggling to maintain a consistent workforce by using drones and sensors. Let's start by saying that our business is based and is inspired by conservation, agriculture, and ag. Here you can see our team and you can see also our logo. In our logo, we have what is a drone and in the top of the drone, we have some sensors. We have the chain chance to change the impact on climate change and preserve nature using this technology. I think it's a great idea. I mean, it would definitely uh, help us at Green Sky. Mm -hmm. uh, so did you guys think of this idea the last few days, or did you benchmark to come up with this idea for this sensor? Because I think this is a great idea. Yeah. But is this something that is out there and you benchmarked off of this? Or did you guys come together and create this all of a sudden? So we created this idea. Wow. We we know that there's drones that do this stuff, but people have to control it. And we created an idea that some um, engineers can create a sensor, and the sensor is gonna do everything for you. And the sensor is gonna communicate with the drone even. Great idea. I would um, encourage you guys to, to trademark it. Let's welcome Green Hands. Finally, the company Green Hands looking to create a connection between the customer and the crop. It's going to be a type of U-Pick farm. How Juan mentioned, this is seen in the United States, but here in Puerto, in Puerto Rico, we don't have it. So people are going to go through our farms, and they're going to have a basket just like this, and they're going to be able to pick up their own pro produce. 
And when they do this, the first couple of times people go, they're gonna go and see it as a fun activity with the family. But after a while, when they go to other supermarkets, they say, wait, I'm buying something here. I don't even know where it's coming from. Green hands will be from everybody, from the smallest child to a senior citizen. So for price, we got a $5 per basket. Each basket will have three products. This logo has a hand carrying a plant. This represents improving your well-being by choosing a revenue. How are you going to deal with the startup cost? Your startup cost oh. is 2000 Okay, so actually uh, we searched uh, some grants and um, one of them were, was the value, value added pro, uh, producer grant that was $75,000 and another grant was the Sustainable Agriculture Research and Education uh, grant that would be $25,000 in total at 100, so will be um, over the First place for the AMPS Institute, Entrepreneur Institute for 2024 is Thanks to these uh, uh, opportunities program, we had three students that are interested in working for us, and today they're interned uh, with USDA and RCS in the Caribbean. We have uh, one intern that is from uh, St. Croix and two interns that are from Puerto Rico. So we're, uh, it is proof that information is power and it takes results into what we're trying to do, right? These are three students that may or may have not known about NRCS and now they're working with us thanks to the uh, exposure that they have through NRCS and James M. Institute. So again, we're looking forward to continuing this type of efforts uh, and continue attracting youth into agriculture and conservation. Hi, my name is Roy Rivera, and I'm glad that I had this experience because it opens you many doors for the future and your career. And how was the food? <laughs> the food was delicious and really good service. Really recommend it. The mindset that I'm going to remember is passion because I feel like if you're passionate for something like even if nobody believes in your business if you have enough passion like you can grow your business and you can show them that oh my god even though you don't believe in me like I had this passion like, mindset, like the mindset of passion. We, we were in, in the last day of, of the camp and we stay up at 3 a.m. doing the work in one of the rooms because we couldn't go outside to do it and there was one of the most significant spirits that I'm going to have that I have to stay awake I have to stay awake until 3 a.m. doing the work and doing the stuff with my roommate and with my co work. One thing that was said at first, if you want to have something that you never have, you need to do something that you never have done before. It has been a great experience. It's my first time at an AMP Institute uh, retreat. Um, I have been to many retreats and many youth experiences, but this one is completely different. It's unique. It's a unique, unique experience. So it's, I, my expectations were high. This is really, really uh, out of the water. It was great, great experience for me. Uh, I hope to be able to get everything I learned here to be able to increase funding for the institute so we can look for more funding and so we can do this in more cities for the students. This is something that is needed and is correct. So that's my, that's my objective. AMS Institute and the USDA Natural Resources Conservation Service is looking to hold its intensive youth entrepreneurship retreat stateside next. We'll keep you posted.
I have to tell you, through these AMPS Entrepreneurship Leadership Institute retreats, not only did the students learn more about agriculture and conservation, but the adults did. You know, those of us participating, we learned so much. And now I tell you, that, you know, one of the, the main places I tell kids now is to go into agriculture. Are you an engineer? Go into agriculture. Are you an accountant? Go into agriculture. Are you in the media? Go into agriculture. Because they have positions for every industry. Uh, it crosses, you know, the gamut. So I encourage you to, one, consider, you know, agriculture is your next move. You're looking for a change? Wow, I tell you, nothing greater than being out there uh, in the outdoors. I tell you, that's one of my favorite things to cover are the AMS Entrepreneurship Leadership Institute retreats. Uh, just being in nature, just being in that beautiful uh, environment on a regular basis. Uh, I encourage you to keep following AMPS Institute. Uh, you can always go to ampsinstitute.com uh, to learn more or follow, you know, newsworthy stories. But if you go to ampsinstitute.com and click on media, you'll see not only this story, but you'll see other stories, other retreats. In fact, I know that uh, from another retreat, people have already started um, coming up with plans for a, a vertical farm. So these stories are penetrating and they're working and this message is getting out there. We just need to keep spreading it, keep sharing this story, keep sharing this message. We need uh, more people in the field of agriculture and conservation and particularly the young people to understand that this is a major industry that they should consider. Thank you so much. Uh, for watching Newsworthy Stories. Keep watching for more.